In this tutorial we're going to make ourselves some grass or small environment foliage. We're going to need to have two um, background planes with reference images on them because they're going to be useful for us later on. Turn off show frozen and grey and freeze them so that we can't select them. To start us off we're going to create ourselves a uh, cylinder and we're going to give it a minimal amount of sides and segments. So we're going to ramp that down to four so that we have a diagonal shape and we're going to take the height segments and make them four. And we're going to ramp up the height because what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get it to fit the the shape of a blade of grass. So we're going to convert it to editable poly and we're going to start to model it so that it's going to hopefully appear like a um, piece of grass. So we're going to model it against this one, the reference that's up close. So we're going to edit the placement of some of the vertices. So the top ones, what we're going to do with them is we're going to scale them in so that we have a gradient in shape and we're going to do it in the make it flatter as well. From there we're going to scroll down and go to collapse so that we only have a singular point at the top and I'm going to scale it down again so it's thinner. And we're going to select the inner part or the inner loop by double clicking it. We're going to chamfer it to give it a bit further um, detail down the middle. This is what we're going to have like the blade of grass in the middle will have this sort of um, minor uh, edge to it so it would be visible. And we're going to move that inwards so we've got some depth to the object. As you can see, now it looks as if we have that slight curve. With that, what we're going to do is we're going to put on a texture. So we are going to go into the diffuse and go and make a gradient. Now with the gradient texture, I want to make sure that it is applied to the object. And we now see that the darker the part of the gradient is at the top and the lighter part is at the bottom. And what we want to do is to create some copies of this because we want to create some variation of our object. So we're going to put gradients on all of them that are all slightly different. We're going to copy that by clicking and dragging onto new colour swatches and we're going to place them onto the copies. So what we're going to do first of all is going to click on the colour swatch, we're going to go for the, the picker and we're going to select the top part of our blade of grass. We're going to press OK and we're going to move on to the other ones and go gradually further down the blade of grass and what we'll see is the change in colour based on the reference image that we've got with our newly made and modelled blades of grass. With the other two we're going to have to go and make some variation. So we're going to apply different colour maps to them. We're going to rename them or rename the material so that we know it's a different material placed on these. And we're going to find alternate colours so that there's some slight variation. We don't want every single blade of grass to be exactly the same. And I'm through this I'm just speeding it up to show you the slight changes um, that I'm making to the colour. So we've got three variations. With this now we're going to have to create some variation in shape. So we're going to copy some more. And with this one we're going to go into the modifier list and put an FFD on it. I'm going to rotate the object and we're going to go into the control points and rotate them and change th and move so they have different uh, blades of grass moving different ways. 
I want to create a variety of these so that we don't have um, repeating blades of grass. So we're going to go through a fair, f a fair amount of them, copying and pasting them, placing FFD modifiers on them, rotating them and scaling them um, to a point where we have a clump of grass. So if I just speed up this process, what we want to do is to vary the size and the scale and the position. At the minute they're rather flat, so what we need to do is change the uh, depth as well. This is going to be very important for us when we're making um, the texture map for them later on. Make sure that the different uh, grass models have different variations to them, else they're going to look rather similar. You can copy those, and with a local rotation, we can enable us to rotate them all singularly, and that makes it a lot quicker. So again, rotating them and moving the shapes so that you can get some variation in all axes. Okay, now we've got a little bit of a variety. Just going to do some more small changes to the depth. With that, we should get different shading when we come to baking the object in a moment, which is important to try and make the object to look as realistic as possible. Now it's important that we make a variety of different sizes amounts of clumps of grass as well. Um, so making things thinner, sm smaller, less blades of grass on separate parts, uh, different types of clumps. Now we're only making really one clump in this um, tutorial, but a variety of them is going to be really helpful for you when you're making a, a more of a varied environment. Now when we're trying to add some more detail to it, we're going to have to add an editable poly to all the objects. We're going to attach them all first of all, so they're the same object. It's going to speed up this process. So that after we have attached them all, we get all the inner edges. Now with these inner edges for each of the blades of grass, we're going to extrude them slightly so that we can get a little bit of extra detail on the chamfer so that they actually look more and more like the inner part of a blade of grass. Only very small in detail though. This is so that we can create a suitable bump map um, to be applied onto the, uh, the grass clump when we finish it. Now for the next stage we're going to need to make a plane. This is going to be perfectly square because this is going to act as our active texture surface and it will enable us to be able to um, project this onto the back of it. So we're just going to change this to a, uh, a colour which is going to be noticeable um, when we put green in front of it. So I'm just doing an orange that's uh, one of the furthest away on the colour wheel. It's going to move it, the clump of grass, uh, into a location for the part of the texture. And I'm just going to try and bring some of this stuff together so that it's uh, closer together within um, the map. And we make sure that all the blades of grass are within the um, confines of the picture when we get them there. So with the plane selected, we need to go to render to texture. And we need to turn on the um, enable the projection mapping and we need to pick the cylinder or the grass part as well. So what we should see is a cage appear around the both of them. So we need to lower the padding, go into options, and make sure enable super sampler is on the global super sampler. Close that. We want to make sure they change the colour to a similar to what our uh, grass texture is, but on the darker side of it. This will make sure that any of the uh, bleeding of the green from the grass um, and the background image um, will not be as noticeable. Now we're going to have to add our maps. So we're going to want to make sure that we have a fuse and that we have changed the size of that um, to meet at what we need for us, our size of a texture, so 2048, 2048. Um, if we go high, we can minimize it, but we can't do it the opposite way. 
and we need to make sure that render to files only is selected. We're going to complete it and we're going to render it. And what you'll see is what will appear as the diffuse texture. Now obviously we've got a few little bits wrong at the bottom of this now so we might want to do some little changes to it um, or cut it off when we go into Photoshop. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to remove the projection modifier so that I can do the other maps including the diffuse, the normal, the light map or the specular, the shadow or the ambient occlusion and the bump map to the object as well. Before rendering them you're going to want to make sure that they're all 2048 by 2048 so that we can use them simultaneously when we come to editing our diffuse map within Photoshop because what we're going to do is overlay the light or specular and the ambient or shadow map over the top of the diffuse to give it more depth so that when it works alongside the normal map we have a lot more of a realistic view of our grass and it will really give it that little punch to make it look as if it's three-dimensional rather than a flat surface. All I've done there is just opened all of the um, files into Photoshop so that we can edit them and use them simultaneously. We're going to um, grab the normal map and we're going to overlay it over our diffuse map. Um, with that we're going to then go in hue with saturation and we're going to lower the saturation to its lowest point and press OK. Um, with that we're going to turn it into a multiply layer so that we can see the normal data that we've collected in terms of depth and it'll be overlaid onto our diffuse map. Now you can do some further changes to this as well in Photoshop. Perhaps you might want to do some of your own painting, um, whether it be hand-wise or whether you perhaps want to do um, some more uh, maps that are going to help out in terms of overlaying them. We're just going to save it out and we're going to apply it onto our plane within 3ds Max. From here what we're going to have to do is to use the opacity map that we uh, uh, created with our render to, to texture and we're going to have to apply that um, to the object as well. Make sure it's two-sided because then we'll be able to see the texture on both sides and from there what we can do is collapse the stack and edit the, uh, the points so that the, uh, the plane is even smaller um, than the rest so that we just have um, the part that is our um, clump of grass. Optimize the shape so that we cut off any parts in which we don't want um, using the, the connect. Move those connects so that everything is inside um, and then lower the poly count um, afterwards. Make sure that everything's inside of it, we don't want to cut it off. From there we'll be able to copy this um, in terms of instances around our environment um, and we'll be able to um, make our own um, environment plane. Change the hierarchy so it's at the bottom of the object and then you'll be able to move them into position on your environment within 3ds Max. And position them through rotations, um, scaling and um, a manner of different ways of manipulating different sized ones um, that uh, we mentioned earlier on. Perhaps you don't want to do the same clumps so you can really make a bit of a variety of it so it will all look um, as different as possible. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps when making in-game grass.